We are at Elephant Rock. Elephant Rocks. Yeah, Elephant Rocks State Park in Missouri. And it rocks. I don't really know if it rocks. I didn't actually go in yet, but just trying to be funny. Maximalist mini bars with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! Even if you know absolutely nothing about it, Elephant Rock State Park is pretty interesting. Just because just visually... It's got these giant boulders that are very cool, but once you know the actual story of how they were formed, it gets even more interesting. These rocks were formed one and a half billion years ago, billion, in what is known as the Precambrian era. They're made of granite, and they were formed by molten rock magma that accumulated under the Earth's surface when the ground kind of collapsed after an eruption. As the surface layer above the magma eroded, vertical cracks formed, and that carved the newly formed granite underneath into blocks. Over time, water running down into those cracks rounded off the edges, and then eventually erosion just carried away all the disintegrated stuff surrounding them. So you end up with these giant roundish boulders. These stacks of sphere-shaped boulders sitting on top of bedrock of the same material are called tors, T-O-R-S. That's the name for the geological formation. And this isn't the only place in the world that they exist, but it's certainly among the coolest. And they're still changing. They're changing all the time because as water runs down into them in the cracks between or the places where one rock touches another, it causes more erosion when it freezes and expands. And then there's this stuff that grows on them, these lichens, which they're kind of like a moss. Here's an example of lichens right next to little Mr. Lizard. Cutie. Weather causes these swirly depressions on the surface and then they fill with water, which freezes eventually. And that kind of starts the cycle again and causes more erosion. But these holes, these, I was like, wow, how did that happen? But these actually turned out to be man-made. They started quarrying here in 1869, and these holes would be where a sample was taken from this particular boulder. There are actually two abandoned quarries in the park. Granite from this site has been used in buildings all across the country, like literally from Massachusetts to California, and a lot of the sidewalks in St. Louis are paved with leftover small pieces of granite. It's this place wouldn't even be a park if it weren't for a guy named John Stafford Brown. He spent most of his career as the chief geologist for the St. Joseph Lead Company, and in 1966, he and his wife, Evangeline, donated 120 acres, and that became the park. The place gets its name, obviously, from these rocks, but it was mainly the fact that the main cluster of boulders looked like a train of circus elephants, and in fact, the largest one has been named Dumbo. So it's not some super intense athletic trail or anything, you know, it's like 0.9 miles around the whole park. It's lined with these plaques that give you information. And one thing that's unique and really cool about them is that not only do they have the information typed out in text, they also have the information in Braille and it's called the Braille Trail. The trail leads up to this observation area that's not quite the top, but pretty close. And you can tell from the graffiti that a lot of people did make it up this far. That's one thing I'm finding as I travel all over America, that people love to put their names on things. The main trail kind of dead ends at this giant rock that's like a platform. And then wedged between that and another big rock is this rickety little wooden staircase. So you go up that staircase and then when we come down the other side, now we're at the top. There's more proof of the name thing up here because there's names everywhere. Not, not graffiti, but these are carved into the stone and it's the names of all the workers from the quarry that used to be here. They carved their names right in the stone and now the stone is part of the park. Their names are preserved for history. This is a great vantage point. You can see really far. I'm trying to see if I can see the bus down in the parking lot. Oh, just barely. Hey, I can see my house from here. Come on, Captain, you can do this. Instead of taking the trail to go back down, Captain and I scaled down the face of the rock. Ooh, wow. We're so tough. I mean, it's really easy. This trail is a super easy hike, let's face it. But I'm sitting here patting myself on the back for doing this whole walk because... I don't know. I mean, I, I used to walk three and a half miles around the reservoir every single day. And there was a time when I ran 18 miles three times a week. So 
yeah, I guess I'm out of shape. But that's really just conditioning, right? I can get back into shape. And I'm also getting older. And I have no control over that. That's going to happen. My edges have been pretty well rounded off just like the elephants here. It's okay, though. I mean, it has to be okay, right? Because it is, it is what is. Right, Captain? We're moving on tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to get out of Missouri right away, but we are going to be leaving the farm. And, um, yeah, the, the driveway thing is not really working for me. And the rain, although the rain has gotten slightly better. But, you know, I didn't build myself a home on wheels to sit in a driveway, so... There were still entire empires of California highway I wanted to share with you There's so much more to see, and we're gonna go see it. After we say goodbye to Cheyenne and the gang, of course. There were still right now, we're gonna say goodbye to you. Till next time. Down